under the domination and control of the enemy, with certain exceptions. One of these exceptions was a submarine, which for the purposes of this story we will call the Sand Shark. The actual name of the submarine, her commander, and the people involved have been changed for protection of privacy. But all essential details of the operation are based on fact. It is the courage and resourcefulness of men like the one we call Captain Waycross who have made the achievements of the submarine service something that will forever endure in the annals of history. The Sand Shark was maintaining radio silence, deep in the heart of enemy waters. A mission the severing of vital enemy supply lines. The captain and his executive officer were attempting to locate the elusive Japanese convoys. I don't know, Charlie. I've gone over this with a fine tooth comb. They must be coming around through here. It's worth a try, sir. Course 146. It's dark enough to run on the surface. Yes, sir. Surface! Surface! You hear that, Harris? Maybe you get a chance to ignite that cigarette. Wonderful war, wonderful war. My kids will say, Daddy, did you ever use a bar? Yes, little man. A space bar on a typewriter. See that corn on my pinky, little man? Daddy got that from hitting a space bar on a typewriter. So I've got corns on my fingers from knocking the radio key. So we're both corny. You can say that again, Sparks. And you probably will. Helmsman, a new course. Come right to course 146. 146. Coming right to 146. The rudder is right, 15 degrees. Why the long, sad face, you? You lose your typewriter? And that wouldn't make the yo bust out crying. I give it the deep six myself, except for one thing. What's that? That big fat brig at Portsmouth. Besides, how would they know how much caviar and champagne the fleet is consuming without those ever-loving cotton-picking reports of mine? Radar fifth, bearing 350, sir. Stay with it. It's a convoy, sir. Seven or eight well-defined pips, bearing 350. There's a small pip out ahead of the others. Could be a destroyer. I see him. And I think he's seen us. To the bridge! Dive! Dive! I'll have a look now, Lou. I couldn't see a thing, Captain. No. Neither can I. All stop. All stop. Down scope. So are you a sound man? I'll give you six, two, and even. This is what we've been looking for, sir. Could be. Power's closing. Sounds like that destroyer. All ahead, flank. All ahead, flank. Right, full rudder. Right, full rudder. Crying for action. See what you brought on? Not the kind of action I crave, Sparks. All I'll get is the action of writing a report on how many soup bowls got smashed in the galley. He's lost us. Cheer up. Maybe he'll come back. Cops go. Maroon. 
Cruz. Seven or eight. Couple of escorts. And the one back there looking for us. Range, Mark. 2650. The captain maneuvered Sand Shark into position to get a shot at the greatest number of ships in the convoy. In such a position, a torpedo may miss one or two ships and hit a third. There is an element of luck, but skippers with high scores seem to have the knack of making their own luck. Range, Mark. 2445. Bearing, mark, 348. Fire one. Two down and six to go. Colors at high speed, bearing 065. Take it out at 300 feet. Colors, bearing 060. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. Figured you were going to zig instead of zag. That's why we'll zig now. Right full rudder. Right full rudder. This was a maneuver often used with success by submarines under attack by depth charges. That is to hide in the water recently depth charged. Captain Waycross brought the sand shark down to 300 feet and waited. Destroyer stopped his propellers. All stop. All stop. There then followed one of the most nerve-wracking of all situations that a submariner has to face, the waiting game. Both you and the enemy wait in frozen silence, with only the sensitive electronic ears of the hydrophones tuned up to their high sensitivity. You don't know where the enemy is. And he doesn't know where you are. You hope. He's drifted directly over, sir. I think I can pick up the waves against his hull. That is one advantage the submarine enjoys. There are no waves to betray him down there. At 300 feet, it is calm and quiet and dark. He started his engine, sir. He's headed away. Bearing 164. Sand Shark came up to take a look-see and spotted the remainder of the convoy and escorts. All through that night, the Sand Shark continued the attack. Skipper's certainly in the groove tonight. Yeah. The captain certainly was in the groove that night. Out of a convoy of eight ships and three escorts, the Sand Shark sank five of the enemy ships and severely damaged another. Having expended his torpedoes, the captain headed the Sand Shark for her base, where he received special orders that were to be of vital interest to Yeoman Harris, who was so anxious to see some personal action. As soon as she was refitted, the Sand Shark headed out to sea on another mission. A very unusual mission for a submarine. It's my reaction exactly, Charlie. Since when did we become a transport captain? Since the commander of Task Force 71 issued that order. If we do find him, it's going to get kind of crowded. Well, as my exec, I'll leave those trifling details to you. The missionary and his wife? Six British subjects and a party of four army enlisted men. Eight a dozen people, Captain. You know, by strange coincidence, I arrive at the same total. They're scattered all over the map. Well, ours not the reason why. Ours but to do or die. Noble sand shark. Right. Send the yeoman in here, William. Aye, aye, sir. Twelve people. What are we, the USS Hilton? <laughs> Certainly whales give them up. That's why they call a she-whale a cow and a baby whale a calf. Oh, yeah? So how many whales did you ever milk? 
I never milk a cow, wise guy, but they give milk. Oh, no, they don't. You have to take it away from them. I was raised on a farm. And there you should have stayed. Captain wants to see you in the wardroom, Harris. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, Mr. Masters. Hmm? Do whales give milk? Sure. They're supposed to be at latitude 513 north and longitude 119.16 east. That's about here, sir. Mm hmm Oh, sit down, Harris. Yes, sir. No, no, this is not a report. It's pretty shallow and shore here. We'll have to lay out about 4,000 yards. That's a long way to paddle that little rubber boat. We can do it, sir. There's no other way. Harris, I understand that you're restless in your present job. Restless, sir? Me? I understand you find a yeoman's life a little on the dull side. Well, it's not exactly very exciting, sir. I understand you served a hitch in the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. Paris Island, Quantico, Nicaragua. Why did you leave the Marine Corps? They found out I could run a typewriter and I got stuck at a desk. So I joined the submarine service and they found out I could run a typewriter. So I'm still running a typewriter. Do you know how to operate a Browning automatic rifle? A bar? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I qualified with a bar in the Marines. Y you're not kidding me, are you, sir? No, I'm not kidding, Harris. Mr. Hole is getting up a detail for a special mission ashore. I'll go. I'll go. I mean, uh, I would like to volunteer for the details, sir. Are you sure you want to go? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Very sure, sir. I don't know if I ought to risk it. You get yourself killed, and I'll have to type all those reports. Well, I won't get killed, sir. I'll be very careful. Well, I mean, uh... That's all right, Harris. You're on the detail. Now, you better take a good signal man. Hoffmeyer? He's a good man. And someone else. It'll take four of you to paddle that cranky boat. Gunner's mate Green is a good man with a small boat. All right. But make it completely voluntary. This is no drill. That country is swarming with Japanese. That's why we've got to evacuate those people. All right, sir. Captain, uh... I would like to express my appreciation Oh, for skip it, it, Harris. You better check out with the bar. It's been a long time. Yes, sir. A long time. And you better brief your detail tonight. We'll make the landfall uh, day after tomorrow. All right, sir. Another enemy, Harris! Get him! Nice shooting, Harris. Get some more empty enemies from the cook and the rest of you boys practice with a carbine and sidearm. Aye, aye, sir. There was much more to the preparation for the special mission than target practice. Charts of the area, tide tables and currents had to be evaluated and memorized. Nothing was taken for granted. The shore party tested the rubber boat and rechecked their supplies and equipment. Four packets of atabrine tablets. Check. Four first aid kits. Check. Twenty red and twenty green berry stars and two berry pistols. Check. Late the following afternoon, the Sand Shark cleared Sibitu Passage and headed up on course 293. At 0507, she submerged and continued in towards the island. The submarine arrived at her designated position and lay on the bottom throughout the day. This is one for the book. Us getting all slicked up like we was fixing to go ashore at Pearl. To meet a couple of things at Bongo Charlie's. You wouldn't want to get killed with a five o'clock shadow on your face, would you, Spark? Hey, don't talk like that. It's bad luck. Superstitious talk. Oh, boy. Look what you did. It's my mirror, Sparks, and it is bad luck. I'm out a dollar and 75 cents. Hey, I mean, no, I mean, a thing like that. Ah. Uh, I mean, well, it was your mirror. You mean you really go for that, Bill? As soon as it was dark, the captain brought the sand shark to the surface and assembled the landing party on the bridge. Now that hill on shore there will be your principal checkpoint. The missionary has a small church at the base of the hill. We'll pick him and his wife up first, and then proceed to another point on the weather side of the island for the others. Any questions? 
Is he expecting us, sir? Yes, he's supposed to be on the beach. The recognition signal is B for Victor. A red flare if you get in trouble. Aye, aye, sir. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. And whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have life everlasting even unto the end of time. Amen. Only one tonight. Yes, they're afraid to come out of the jungle. Does that woman understand English? No. Nor Spanish, nor Tagalog. She's from some remote mountain tribe. Then what could she... Jean, I wasn't praying to her, dear. No, of course not. But it seems so futile to remain here now. Well, I may be wrong, but it would be a poor shepherd who would desert his flock in a time of danger. Now, wouldn't... But there is no flock, Gavin. They've all gone, scattered. Scattered, yes, but... As I see it, that's all the more reason why I should be here when they come back. If they come back? If they return, it wouldn't be good if they came back to an empty church. No, Jean, I'm afraid of the Japanese, but I'm more afraid of my own conscience. Well, my conscience tells me we've done all we can here for the present. Well, then you'd best go to the beach and wait for the rescue party. Oh, I can't, Gavin, without you. I can't desert my post, dear. I'd feel like a coward, a traitor to the trust that's been placed in me. Strange we haven't seen any signals. Maybe we drifted too far down the beach. Hey, there's the hill. Hoffman, try your signal up the beach. Yes, sir. This is black up there. It's the inside of a cow. Try this direction. Our party's on the beach. They're trying to get recognition. A couple of lights went on up at the head of the bay, Captain. That's not good. That's enemy country. It's all enemy country now, isn't it? Yes. Our men have stopped signaling. I don't like this, Charlie. We're in too close to submerge. If they give away our position, we could be trapped in here like a minnow in a jug. I hate to have come this far and to go back empty-handed. What do you say we try and find the church? Aye, aye, sir. All right, Hoffman, you stay here and guard the boat. If you get in any trouble, send up a red flare. Aye, aye, sir. Come on. The church is supposed to be at the base of that hill. Well, you are ready to go. But I wish you would go. It'll make it easier for me, believe me. Oh, Gavin, I thought I could persuade you to come. We could come back again when we could work more effectively, but... Jean, can't you see that a good soldier never deserts his post in a time of danger? I've got to stay here where I'm needed. Needed for what? To be butchered by fanatical... Oh, I'm sorry, Gavin. Forgive me. Pack your things. I'm taking you down to the beach right now. No, I won't go without you. Ever. There goes a red flare. And two white flares. Our people didn't take any white flares. They know we're here, Charlie. Are you the missionary? Yes, I'm Dr. McFarland. Now, let's go. There's not much time. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I, I just can't leave. You can't leave? Well, you can't stay here. Now, 
mortar on us, Lou. If they zero one in here, that'll be it. Look, I can't force you people to leave. Are you coming or not? But can't you reason with him or something? He got hit. Let's get him out of here. I think he's just stunned. I'll take him. Oh, no! Give him a hand, Harris. Can we get off the back? Yes, this way. We've about run out of time, Charlie. That's our rubber boat. They're heading back. The question is, can we wait here long enough to pick them up? That's pretty heavy fire from shore. There's nothing we can do without risking shooting up our own people. As Captain Waycross suspected, the enemy installations on the island had reported his position to one of their destroyers operating in the vicinity. A short time later, the Sand Sharks radar detected the approaching vessel. Contact on the radar, bearing 019, range 18,000 yards. Stay on it. Aye, aye, sir. It's not one of ours, that's for sure. Got to get out in deep water fast. There's something in the water over there. That's our rubber boat. Get a working party topside to take aboard rubber boat. Aye, aye, sir. Maybe we can make it. I hope so, sir. Contact still bearing 019. Range 17,000 yards. It's got to be close. The shore party and the missionaries, with just a few minutes to spare, were taken aboard. Sand sharks emerged, and the enemy destroyer passed directly overhead. He overshot. All ahead, full. Looks like we're gonna make it. The sand shark did make it to the safe, quiet refuge of deep water. And then the shore party and the missionaries were assembled in the wardroom. Captain, now that I'm here, I wish to express my gratitude to you and your gallant men. Had I not been struck down by that terrible concussion, I would have remained with my charges. However, who am I to question the workings of a higher wisdom than my own? He works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. You know what I'd do if I were you, Harris? What? I'd put some tape on the knuckles of my right hand before that preacher finds out what caused that terrible concussion. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I happen to be looking in that direction when that mortar shell exploded. I'll be back in a moment. Very interesting incidents sometimes occur which never find their way into official reports. The ship we have called the Sand Shark succeeded in picking up, besides the missionaries, a party of six British subjects. On other occasions, she successfully put ashore guerrillas who harassed Japanese patrols and installations. Submarines generally didn't like this kind of work, but they recognized it as a vital part of the war, and certainly no one else could do it. Then, too, the gratitude of those saved from certain death or worse was a reward that few have experienced. Please join us again for another thrilling story of the silent service. Take her down and up and by Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide, from down, down underneath the sea. Safe and forced, we'll pass the word in the future's yet to be. That 